when I was being recruited in high school, and all coaches, you know, they recruit you, they talk about the possibility of playing in a bowl. And, you know, while you're younger, you get a chance to watch it on TV, and you sometimes hope that maybe one day you can play in it. You know, like for me, this is one of the biggest things, you know, that's ever come around for me, you know, so I'm just real happy that we're going to be in the Peach Bowl. Atlanta Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, the Ms. Lou Television Network brings you the ninth annual Peach Bowl Football Classic, featuring the University of North Carolina Tar Heels against the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Today's Peach Bowl Classic is brought to you by... Toyota's answer to high prices, the answer, official car of the Peach Bowl. And by the people in your town who also bring you the bright, refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to just about everything you do. By Head & Shoulders, the shampoo that's strong against dandruff, gentle on your hair. Schick Super 2, the twin blade cartridge with Teflon. It's your face, let Schick love it. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Happy New Year, everyone, from Atlanta Stadium. I'm Howard David as Kentucky. First time in 25 years at a bowl game against the North Carolina Tar Heels. They've played in bowl games five times in the last seven years. Dwayne Dow, it's good to be working with you again on this New Year's Eve. You bet, Howard. Happy New Year to you. And from our Ms. Lou crew around the nation, Happy New Year, everybody. North Carolina, nine wins, two losses. They won their first four, then lost two in a row, then won their last five. Kentucky, four wins and four losses at one point in the season. Won their last three to wind up seven and four. Don Perkins, it looks like a close, exciting football game today on Ms. Lou. Dwayne, everything looks good, but there's some, cur uh, some concern in the camp of the Tar Heels right now. Their number one running back, Mike Voigt, sprained an ankle a couple of days ago. He's still questionable at this time. The reason it's such a concern is this young man has run for over 1,400 yards this year. Kentucky, on the other hand, they're all healthy, alive, and well, but the fact that they have not been in a bowl game in a quarter of a century, they're chomping at the bit. All right, we'll be back with the starting lineups of this Peach Bowl Classic right after these briefy Bob Winkle. At weak side linebacker number 50, Jim Kovac. The middle guard is number 92, Jerry Blatton. Strong side linebacker Mike Martin, number 59. Defensive tackle, 79, James Ramey. At defensive end, number 97, Art Still. At defensive back for Kentucky, number 35, Ray Carr. Defensive back number 44, Mike Siganos. Number 16 is Rick Hayden at safety. And defensive back number 6, Dallas Owens. We'll return with the opening kickoff of the 1976 Peach Bowl right after these words from your local stations. But North Carolina had a tremendous year. 23 of 25 extra point attempts. 13 of 18 field goals, 62 points, second only to Mike Boyd in North Carolina scoring this year. Right there, number 91, Mike, uh, right there, the uh, kicker is Tom Biddle. He's a native of Yorktown, Pennsylvania, as the Tar Heels, who won their last five. Yorktown, Virginia, is the young man's hometown. Biddle kicking to Hill and Brooks. Kentucky fans on the near side of the field. North Carolina fans on mass on the far side of the field. A lot of partisan behavior from the crowd today. Out comes Chris Hill, sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama, and he is hit and brought down inside the 15-yard line. Stan Lancaster, number 82 for the Tar Heels, a junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, made the stop. And here we go with Kentucky on offense. A little bit, little bit of a hesitation that time by Chris Hill, a little bit of indecision as to whether he should bring it out or not. He did get it back out to the 20-yard line, though, so no problem. There's the quarterback, Derek Ramsey, number 12, a junior from Camden, New Jersey. The backfield and the wishbone, Rod Stewart, 32, Greg Woods, 2, Randy Brooks, 45. On first down, some good bakery, and the play went right up the middle for Kentucky as they wedged it out to about the 20-yard line, and the fullback, Rod Stewart, was the ball carrier, sophomore from Lancaster, Ohio. 
Might mention that uh, the Wildcats will be going against a 5-2 line that's set up by the Tar Heels. Both defensive ball clubs will go with a five-man lineup and two linebackers. Second down and five for the Wildcats of Kentucky. Ball is on the 25-yard line. And coming through is the right halfback, Greg Woods. And he appears to have the first down. So let's wait just a second as the officials are waving their arms. Looking for a measurement right here to see if they have the first down. Ramsey, Derek Ramsey is complimented, as both of you know, by a fine offensive line, which rival coach Dooley praised as being one of the best in the South, of course, led by 6'6", 250-pound six, Warren Bryant. Just a little short. No, they just made it by the tip of the football. The ball just shy of the 30-yard line. And so the University of Kentucky. Boy, look at this. First bowl game since 25 years ago, 1951. A game of inches, and that's why we call it that. Don't look there for Kentucky Wildcats to put that ball in the air unless they have to. They're a running ball club. With the ball just shy of the 30. First down. And here is 22 Chris Hill. And he is driven back. Chris Hill with the ball carrier. And it was Ronnie Johnson, number 20, the free safety, stopping him. Let's take a look at it again. Kentucky on offense. You're going to see a pretty good lick there. Ball carrier Chris Hill. Got a good stiff arm there, but a great lick there delivered by one of the Tar Heels. Can't catch that number, but a good lick delivered on Chris Hill. Second down and five. As it turned out, he did gain five yards on the play. Ronnie Johnson was the man that made that tackle. Derek Ramsey. Now he looks to throw. Slips the tackle. Still on his feet, brought down at the 21-yard line. 81, Bill Perdue, and 84, Dave Simmons. As Ramsey was looking to throw that time, got away from one man, but then was brought down for a loss. It was Buddy Curry, the right side linebacker, that had the first hit on Derek Ramsey. You'll see it here. Don, looked almost like a broken play. Ramsey looked like he was looking for someone. He gets away from Buddy Curry, the linebacker, number 57. Now he's trying to reverse his field, but a good blow delivered on him by 84. Good pressure by the Tar Heels. Third down and 17 now. And at third and 17, it's Ulysses Bun Reigns, number 67, making the hit on 22 in white, Chris Hill. And so fourth down and punt formation for Kentucky. And now all the noise coming from the far side of the field, the North Carolina fans. The 37,000 plus here from North Carolina love it. Bill Collins, junior from Fairfax, Virginia, is deep on the punt return. And the punter is Pete Gemmel, a senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Fair catch called for back at the 46-yard line. Tail, one of the up men in the return formation, and good field position coming up down and Howard for North Carolina. They'll have the ball at their own 46-yard line. I'll tell you, the offensive center for North Carolina reserve center, Jim Andrews, at 6'4", 240, almost blocked that punt. He came very close. The quarterback is Matt Kupek, number 12. The running backs are Billy Johnson, 36, the fullback. Larry Tedder, 32, the tailback. For the injured all-league performer, Mike Boyd. Tight end is Brooks Williams, 88. Wingback, Mel Collins, 21. Split end will be Walker Lee, number 28. All right, with a timeout on the field, the score, North Carolina, nothing, and Kentucky, nothing. Short gain, first possession here. Billy Johnson got the carry for... The University of North Carolina, he was the fullback. He's only a freshman from Buckingham, Virginia. Mike Martin made the stop, the strong side linebacker, number 59. They got four yards on that play, so it'll be second down and six at midfield for the Tar Heels. Rouse is in at wide receiver and plays the lead for North Carolina. Play action, Kupak throwing long. Intercepted, overthrown. Overthrown intended for the wingback, Mel Collins, number 21. Good play, action fake on that one, but it did not fool any of the Kentucky Wildcat defenders. They covered that one pretty well. Mel Collins tried to go downfield. Rick Hayden was covering him. Good job covering that time by Rick Hayden. Kentucky Wildcats were right on top of it. North Carolina, not strange to playing in front of big crowds midway through this season. At Missouri, they played in front of a 60,600-plus crowd. One of their two losses on the season, and they came back in those two midseason defeats. Third down and six. You go. Go. throwing long again. Got him. Complete. Touchdown. Walker Lee. On the top. Nothing too fast. 
happy about that play, guys. Walker Lee just ran a fly pattern, working on Rick Hayes in the deep pass that time for North Carolina. Oh, they're calling it back. They're calling this one back. Somewhere there was a flag. Everyone in the stadium thought it was six points, but there was a flag upfield. Have to watch the official offsides, would you believe? Oh. How would you like to be the guy on the line that committed that error? Oh, man alive. That just cost him six points and five yards. But I'll tell you what, Hayden was beaten deep. The Kentucky defender had just a straight fly pattern by Carolina's number 28 lead. It is still scoreless, but it is now third down and 11 with the ball in the 45 of North Carolina. They elect to run it. No, wait a minute. A break, and the play goes the other way, out to the right. And it's Mel Collins, the wingback, who came around and made pretty good yardage, got into North Carolina territory, appears he's short of the first down into Kentucky territory. Kupek got tremendous sleight of hand. He'd be a great dealer in Vegas, the way he <laughs> faked our cameraman right out, and all of us up here. I tell you what he did, a great bit of ball handling. You don't see that very often anymore. Real good, deceptive kind of faking. That time, Kupek pulled it off. Handed it to number 21, Mel Collins, the flanker, coming to route. Let's take a look at it again. Good face in there by Larry Tedder and Billy Johnson. Kupek done a good job, and Mel Collins going around. And now it's fourth down and one. North Carolina going for it on fourth and one. Hit Kentucky hole. Let's see. There you saw Jerry Blanton, the middle guard, number 92, signaling he thought Kentucky had the ball. Larry Tedder was the ball carrier there, and North Carolina picks it up on fourth down. First down for North Carolina. The ball down at about the 43-yard line of Kentucky. First down for North Carolina. What action so far in this first quarter. Right there, there the North, North Carolina. Carolina. Go ahead. North Carolina coaching staff, head coach Bill Dooley, been there 10 years, been in five bowl games. Straight ahead is Billy Johnson, the fullback. He fumbled the ball, and Kentucky recovers. It was Rick Hayden in there, and the rest of the Wildcats. First down, Kentucky, as it appears at Deal. Number 84 from the Kentucky defense, Bud Deal, from Louisville, made the recovery, Howard. He came up out of the pile and said, hey, look what I've got. We'll take a look at it again, Don. Costly turnover there, Billy Johnson, the ball carrier that time for North Carolina. You the ball's first loose right there. You see it? It's 84. Bud Deal going on top of it. There's an excited sophomore. Kentucky could go nowhere earlier on its first series. Now the Wildcats just short of their own 40. Running out of the full house. The wishbone. Up comes Rod Stewart. Met by a gang of tacklers. Met by D. Hardison, 71. Along with Simmons and Reigns. And now, a little rough stuff. Okay, I think I know what happened on that one. Rod Stewart was stopped in the line on that one by number 71, D. Hardison. Let's take a look at it again on our replay. Evidently, Stewart thought that the whistle had already blown and that he was stopped right there is number 71, D. Hardison. And D. Hardison keeps driving him back. Stewart doesn't like it. Hardison still pushing him back. And right there, Rod Stewart throwing the ball at him. And that's going to be a personal foul, a penalty against the Kentucky Wildcats. D. Hardison, interesting guy, one of the starting defensive tackles at 6'5", 250. And would you believe this guy used to be a running back? <laughs> Can you imagine? He played all sports in high school and was a tailback on the football team with that size. Second down and 23 at the 26-yard line for Kentucky. Binion is on into the field so uh -oh. far. Fumble! But the quarterback, Derek Ramsey, held out of that ball on the second drive. I think he was trying to hand off that time or fake to Rod Stewart going into the lineup. Evidently, they got a little bit too close on it, and the ball popped in the air. Derek okay. Ramsey with great hands. He was recruited, would you believe, at, North at Kentucky for basketball ability. Well, the young man is 6'5", 222 pounds, and he's primarily a runner. He's got good agility. Third down and 23 for Kentucky. Game scoreless first quarter. Beach ball, Atlanta, Georgia. First get up the middle is Rod Stewart, but he's going to be way short of that first down, and Kentucky will have to punt on fourth down. Ken Sheets made the tackle. And Kentucky will have to punt. Pete Gemmel, a senior from Atlanta, will do the kicking, and the punt return man is Mel Collins of Fairfax, Virginia. Collins comes up and 
fumbles on the ball over the 35-yard line, and so North Carolina will have it at about their own 37, first and 10. I'm looking at Mel Collins there, he's a young man that averages about 10 and a half yards per punt return. 10.7 per punt return this season. North Carolina specialty teams, Don, have done so well on the kickoff and punt coverage units on the return teams for both kickoffs and punts. Here we go with the Tar Heels. They've got a man up on the wing there. And up to for North Carolina, 32, Larry Tedder, meeting stiff resistance at the 39-yard line. Picked up a couple on the play. He was Jerry Blanton. Jerry Blanton, the middle guard, hit him hard, but so did number 50, Jim Kovach, who really laid the wood to him. With the ball on the 39-yard line now. Second down at about eight. Excuse me. Running out of the eye formation. Matt Kubek, the quarterback, gives to the eye man, Larry Tedder, and he is stopped. Kentucky tough on defense. Again now, this is usually where Mike Boyd runs. This man not scheduled to start today, Larry Tedder, but the star of the North Carolina team. Mike Boyd apparently is out of this game with an ankle sprain. Young Larry Tedder's got to pick up a lot of slack. He's only carried the ball 34 times this year, so you see that Mike Boyd has been doing the bulk of the running for the Tar Heels. That's Walker Lee going to the right. Split in. Bell Collins on the wing, just behind the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Passing down for Kupak. And he throws low. At midfield, and now North Carolina will have to kick. The pass was intended for Mel Collins. Off the field come the Kentucky Wildcats. Ray Carr coming off there. Defensive back from Louisville. I was isolating in my own mind uh, Lee, the wide receiver for North Carolina, going step for step with Sigados of Kentucky. And they will go in stride for stride. He would look like the secondary receiver on the last play. Johnny Elam, a junior of Charlotte. He's averaging 38 and two-tenths yards a kick this season. Oh, boy. And it's a high this. former down to the 12. Wait a minute. It bounces inside the 10. Out of bounds. And again, it's going to be rather poor field position for Kentucky. I think it could have been worse, though, Dwayne. It looked like it was headed for the coffin corner on that one. Looked like a real good kick. Hit there and took a very good North Carolina bounce. Elam at 38 uh, yards per punt average. He's a good one. Seems like the Atlantic Coast Conference has a lot of good punters. We saw Bob Grupp of Duke last week in the Blue-Gray game, and Elam him for North Carolina. Nothing, nothing in the first quarter. Three minutes and three seconds to play in the first quarter. Excuse me, 11, seven minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first quarter. Greg Wood off the wishbone formation, runs it out for a first down up around the 30-yard line. Ronnie Dowdy, linebacker, made the stop along with... Alan Caldwell, the strong safety, and that's a first down, Kentucky. Greg Woods, 5'10", from Middletown, Connecticut. 5'10", 189-pound senior, the ball carrier that time. Let's check that time for you again. Seven minutes and 30 seconds precisely to go in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing. If you just joined us, a 50-yard touchdown pass was washed out by an offside against North Carolina. Kentucky, Ramsey giving off to Chris Hill. Hill comes up the right side over the 35 to about the 36 and defender Allen Caldwell 38 of Winston-Salem made the stop. There's little, a look at Hill. Little Greg Woods number two for Kentucky put a tremendous block on his man. Unfortunately the running back did not get that far but Woods was really ready for that to go for more than it went for. There's a gain of three on the play. Second down and seven. First year for the wishbone offense at Kentucky. Lots of deception as Hill got the carry. Not much, however. It'll be third down at about five. There was Stewart getting up. Simmons, the middle guard, made the stop. The Peach Bowl of Charity Game sponsored by the Lions of Georgia for their lighthouse for the blind. What a super day for this Peach Bowl 76 between North Carolina and you see the North Carolina defense, now the Kentucky offensive line. Third down and three. Randy Brooks is in the left half, replacing Chris Hill. And the ball goes to Randy Brooks. First play, he's been in there on, and he comes up to the 40-yard line. It appears he's short, however. Ken Sheets, left end sophomore from Woodbridge, Virginia, made the stop for North Carolina. And now the specialty teams come back onto the field 
and another punt formation situation. Well, in round one of the battle between Ken Sheets and Warren Bryant, Ken Sheets wins the first ball because it was Sheets that got through Bryant to make the tackle. That's Mel Collins, explosive return man. Pete Gemmel kicks. Oh, he can run this one back. Collins comes back to the 34. Good coverage that time by the Kentucky Wildcats. It was a low kick by Pete Gimmel, and those are the kinds that normally get run back on you. <laughs> Looking at Mel Collins there going to the sidelines, a great punt return man from Fairfax, Virginia. With a timeout on the field, the score is Kentucky nothing and North Carolina nothing. It's got the taste and the feel of a new life. Sure, Toyota's a beauty, all right. But how do I know it can really take it? You ask for it. A demonstration of Toyota toughness. Toyota trucks are built tough with a rugged steel frame to handle stress, a tough steel bed to handle up to 1,100-pound payloads, and a five-speed overdrive transmission that helps save wear and tear on the biggest displacement engine in its class. If you can find a better built truck than Toyota, buy it. Quality. You ask for it, you got it, Toyota. Head football coach, University of North Carolina, Bill Dooley, who has taken more ACC teams to bowl games than any coach in league history. First down for North Carolina at the Carolina 34-yard line. And the pitch comes back to Doug Pascal, who was hit and dropped at about the line of scrimmage. Doug Pascal at tailback. They're trying him now in there in place of Larry Tedder. Of course, Mike Voigt, the man who gained 1,400 yards, is the fellow who is on the sideline and cannot play today. Doug Pascal is a young man that Fran Kirk is going to be looking to in the next year to come. He's been a freshman. He's only carried the ball nine times since he's been with Kentucky. Make it a gain of one. Second down and nine. Well, Dooley likes to use the seniors in there, and Tedder is uh, higher grade than the senior on the uh, North Carolina team. Good run there. There is Doug Pascal coming through right up the middle of the Kentucky defense to about the 40-yard line as he gets pretty good yardage and is going to be shy by three yards or so of getting the first down. I talked about Doug Pascal in Kentucky. I meant North Carolina. He's uh, just a freshman there with the Tar Heel. And coming into this game, he'd only carried the ball nine times. Well, we'll see about North Carolina's depth at that tailback spot with the star of the ball club out today. Here's a keeper and drop his quarterback, Matt Kupak. it was from the defense Bob Winkle number 83 and Mike Saganis on our Mizzou Isolite let's take a look at what defense is all about number 59 Mark Martin from Melbourne Florida coming in look at he's blitzing on that one catches the quarterback Kupek before he can pass it off a good solid tackle seen there on our Mizzou Isolite on fourth down North Carolina kicking it is a high kick Sailing down to about the 25, and a fair catch there by the Wildcats. And we'll have to check the man on the catch. It is Bow, a defensive back, number 29. John Bow, freshman from Miami, fair catching the ball. And so in this scoreless game that has three minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Kentucky will take over. On the Wildcats, 26. Again, the big play here early. A 50-yard pass, the one for a touchdown by North Carolina, was washed out by a penalty. Kentucky getting the reprieve there, and that penalty seemed to give Kentucky some life. Now Kentucky running out of the wishbone and looking for room is Chris Hill. Pretty good footwork as he comes out to about the 30, and he's stopped by the right side of that North Carolina defense. 81 getting up to his Bill Purdue. 49 linebacker Ronnie Dowdy. Purdue, a senior from Roanoke, Virginia. Ulysses Rames also in on the stop from Wilmington, North Carolina. The Wildcats love to keep that ball on the ground. They only go to the air out of necessity. Second and four at the 31. Good look at quarterback Derek Ramsey. Six feet five. Camden, New Jersey native. Ramsey giving a hill. Hill off the right side. Russ Conley in there along with 
the other defenders from North Carolina as Hill got the call. Going to be close. It's still going to be a third down situation, though, for the Wildcats. Yes, it'll be third down and a short three at about the 34-yard line. Outside, yeah, yeah. The fullback, Rod Stewart of Lancaster, Ohio. Might have a fumble. Ball, and North Carolina recovers. Wait a minute. Let's watch the official now. Offside, North Carolina. Oh. No, now the Kentucky fans on the near side cheer because Kentucky has kept the ball. There was a fumble that time by Rod Stewart. He had fumbled, but North Carolina was offside, so we're going to have the play over. Well, the offsides call has cost North Carolina six points, and so now it just cost them from stopping them there. They had a change. They could have got it on the turnover, and they lose it. And they would have had great field position in Kentucky territory as we look at the North Carolina sideline. 84 there for the North Carolina club is Simmons, middle guard, Dave Simmons. He wants to go into broadcasting. <laughs> After his days at North Carolina, there's Chris Silly Hill boy. getting the carry. Silly boy. Simmons wants to go into broadcasting, does he? Comes up to about the 42-yard line. And we're going to take a look now at the Mislu Isolite, Don Perkins. Right, look at Warren Bryant, the All-American tackle for the University of Kentucky right here. Let's take a look at his block, his action there in the trenches. Ooh. Doing a good job getting the block on his man, turning him in, giving the running back a little bit more room. Good job there by the offensive lineman. Second down and seven at about the 40 for Kentucky. Scoreless first period. Here's Hill trying to find room, dancing on the near side. Comes up to about the 45-yard line. It was Ken Sheets on the left side of that North Carolina defense who has made a number of the stops for North Carolina. Ken Sheets made the initial hit on the play. On the last play that we isolated on uh, Warren Bryant, he took out D. Hardison, the big six foot five, 250 pound left tackle for North Carolina, did a tremendous job in blowing him right out of the play. Look at that secondary there for North Carolina that leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in interceptions this year. All right, third down and five. Bear in mind, North Carolina had 17 interceptions during the regular season. Look at this protection. Ramsey gets it away and completed the pass to Woods. And Woods comes up, but he's going to be short of the first down. Over the 45-yard line, the pass only traveled a yard or so, and D. Hardison made the tackle. No pressure at all put on Derek Ramsey that time. The North Carolina Tar Heels were playing the pass all the way. They did not put pressure on him. Dropped it off to a secondary receiver, Greg Woods there. Just seeing him come off the side there. But they did not get the first and ten. On fourth and two at about the 46, Kentucky elects to punt. Pete Gummel standing back at the 32. Too much Pete time. Pete Gummel, a senior from Atlanta, and here, yep. illegal procedure on Kentucky, so they'll lose five. That'll put the ball back inside the 45-yard line. Evidently, they lined up incorrectly, and therefore the offsides call, or the illegal procedure call. Those are the kind of penalties that don't really hurt you. You have to punt the ball anyway. You just punt it from five yards deeper. And since they're not near their own goal line, it's of no consequence. Mel Collins uh, hasn't done that much on punt return so far in the first quarter. But again, he is a dangerous punt return man. As Gemmel boots it, going to the far side. Collins watching it. Rolls dead, covered at about the 25 of North Carolina. Clock shows 17 seconds to play in the first quarter. North Carolina, nothing, and this Kentucky team, nothing. Wait and Don, we should watch number 55 as we get a look there at the sidelines, the North Carolina sidelines. We should watch 55, the offensive setup for North Carolina, as he goes head-to-head -head with uh, Blanton, uh, Jerry Blanton, the middle guard for Kentucky. Mark Cantrell is a super football player. He might go very high in the draft if there is one this year. First down at the 25 in the waning seconds of the first quarter, and it was... Billy Johnson, the fullback from Buckingham, Virginia. Moving out to about the 30-yard line. Let's go to our replay again and take a look at some of the action Howard David was talking about. Well, we talked about Mark Cantrell from Atlanta, the All-American center who is expected to go high. We look at him there in the trenches, driving back the defensive, defensive would-be tacklers. All right, that's the end of the first quarter. 
With the score, North Carolina nothing, Kentucky nothing. Let's return to our broadcasting studios for first quarter statistics on the ground. Kentucky has not picked up much yardage rushing. Hill's got 21 yards, Stewart 18, and Woods 22. For North Carolina, Johnson's got 13, Pascal 8, and Tedder 5. As we're back live, we've had a lot of that today, Don. A lot of good defense by both of these teams who again are supported by just thousands of fans from North Carolina and Kentucky. I think the whole states are here on mass. The and we have, today. To, we have to say that North Carolina is certainly missing Mike Voigt, the number one rusher for them, number five in the history of college football, running for close to 4,000 yards. Mike Voigt is not in the lineup for the Tar Heels. This is going to be a third down and one for North Carolina and the Kentucky defense. The Kentucky defense did a job. Jim Kovach, the weak side linebacker, was in, along with Art Still, number 97, the left end. Jim Kovach is a great ball player. He's an honor student, majoring in biology. We're looking at him on our Mislu Isolite. Watch the job he does, blitzing in there from the top of your screen, from the right side of your screen, just doing a great job. This kid has less led Kentucky the past couple of years in tackles. This year he had 94 solo tackles and 49 assists. And for our fans watching up in northern Ohio, he's from up around the Cleveland area, Parma Heights, Ohio, a junior, 6 feet 2, 215 pounds. North so, Carolina has called for a time. North Carolina has called for a timeout. As evidently they did not have enough men on the field, only 10 men on the field for the Tar Heels. And talking about Cantrell, when this guy came to North Carolina, he was only number six at center as a freshman. Man alive, if anybody has come back from being non, not even counted to number one in his position, he's just tremendous. You know, last month, because of the Lions Eye Bank, 23 blind people in Georgia had their sight restored through corneal transplants. That's tremendous. And the proceeds of this game going to that worthwhile charity, there'll be some significant proceeds, believe me. There is Johnny Elam, a junior from Charlotte, averaging just over 38 yards a kick. We've had a number of kicks already. Sure has. In this ball game, as Elam punts it away. This is 44, Mike Sagonis of Norwalk, Connecticut, the New Englander who decided to go to the University of Kentucky. And so the Kentucky Wildcats will pick up the football as we see Lancaster, 82, going off the field, along with 57 Curry in there on the stop. Curry made the initial hit on the play. And Kentucky on its 35. Kentucky has yet to get over the 50-yard line. Kentucky's made some big plays on defense already in this ball game. Derek Ramsey. Throws it on the run, out of bounds. Flag on the play. Grounding. I don't know. I think they're going to get him for intentionally grounding it. The official that was right over there with him did not throw the flag, but one trailing the play did. And that's what we've got, intentional grounding. A call you rarely see, though you hear a lot of uh, shouting for it from the sidelines and from the spectators. Well, you get a penalty plus the loss of a down. Dave Trosper, the tight end, ran a simple out pattern away from the play, and I don't think Derek Ramsey, I'm certain Ramsey didn't see him, because Ramsey went on a down and out and then a down, out and down, because he was free and he never even got a chance to even get the ball to him. Tar Heel coaching staff there, having a little huddle session on the sideline. Head coach Bill Dooley there. Well, Kentucky is back on the 20, where it'll be first down and 25. Kentucky back deep in its own territory. As Ramsey looking to run. He's a good runner. Over the 30. Got about 13 yards on that play. Coming out to the 33 yard line as Derek Ramsey shows that he has an interesting uh, contribution to that wishbone attack, Don. He certainly has. You don't expect a quarterback that's that rangy to be. Washington, D.C. area people and more people and a lot of kids from Virginia. Bill Dooley does a good job of recruiting. He brings youngsters in from all over. Second and eight now at about the 32. There's a close look at Doug Pasco. And again, they run the football, do the Tar Heels, and that defense by Kentucky. Very strong 
43, Bob Loomis getting up. It's nothing, nothing here. Early in the second quarter, we have 12 minutes and 30 seconds to play in the second quarter. Third down and four. Ball on the 35-yard line. Possession play here for the Tar Heels. That's the Tar Heels sideline. Matt Kupek from Syosset, New York, number 12, the quarterback. Kupek passing the football and hitting his man. It's Bill Mabry from Mount Airy, North Carolina, who made the catch. And that's going to be a first down for North Carolina. Mabry, the second leading receiver on the Tar Heels with 12 catches this year for 116 yards. Wide open on that one. The play was really a little bit slow developing. Kubek did not see him in time, and the defender almost got to Mabry before the ball did. Now Mabry is coming out as a wide man to the right. They're running a wide slot to the right. First and 10 on the 46-yard line of North Carolina. Doug Pascal on the pitch coming off the left side, getting up toward midfield, maybe a yard shy, as he was met by a number of the defenders. Jim Kovach, 50, the weak side linebacker, along with Bob Winkle, 83, a tackle from the state of Tennessee in that Kentucky defense. There is Doug Pascal, Greenville, North Carolina, freshman, number 25. And a substitution at right tackle for Kentucky. Gooch is in there in place of Winkle. Tim Gooch from Hawesville, Kentucky. All right, second down and six. At about midfield, and there was Pascal stopped. And again, as we watch this game unfold, you have to say that North Carolina is missing its number one runner, the injured Mike Hoyt. Mike Martin may be hit for the Kentucky defense. Strong side linebacker, a full house here at the Beach Bowl in Atlanta. A lot of good defensive play going on out there this afternoon. These uh, guys are playing like they're playing for the national championship, but they've got their conference pride at stake. The Southeast Conference versus the Atlantic Coast Conference. Third down and six. Right up the middle for what appears to be a first down. Doug Pasco came off the tail of that eye formation, which finally hit by the middle guard, Jerry Blanton, along with Jim Kovach from the linebacking core. First down, North Carolina. Good just offensive blocking. Let's take a look at it again. Ball carrier on this one. Mike Pasho, Doug Pasho, just straight ahead, power blocking before Jerry Blanton, the middle guard, brings him down that time for the Wildcats. Good power, straight ahead, zone blocking. North Carolina frequently has been in Kentucky territory, even though it's scoreless. And coming up to about the 40-yard line. For a gain of just a couple, it was Bob Loomis carrying the football, and he got a couple of yards as you see the defenders get up. Kovach was in on the play, along with Mike Martin, number 59. It'll be second down and seven after a gain of three. Look at that. alignment for the Kentucky Wildcats playing a five-man front with two linebackers. Second down and seven from the 40-yard line of Kentucky. Running the wing formation, and here comes number 21, Mel Collins. He averaged about 11 yards of pickup this okay, year, running from the line of scrimmage. And he's out of bounds on the near side at about the 35. Good block by John Rushing, the left guard, only a sophomore from Wingate, New Jersey, or Wingate, North Carolina, sorry, folks. Number 60, John Rushing, as he blocked right there for that man, number 21, Mel Collins. Collins, occasionally a wide receiver there. He ran as a wing back. Off the North Carolina formation. Very interesting offense, eh, hey, Don Perkins? It certainly is. Mel Collins now went out of the lineup, and Mike Corbin came in. Fleet Delbert Powell at the top of your screen. Burning speed, but they run the football here. And Doug Banks, now the tailback, a freshman, is stopped for a very, very little yardage. <laughs> Happy New Year, Mislu. All right. As we have. Lots of enthusiasm here. Now it's going to be fourth down and two as Delbert Powell goes out of the lineup. And back in the lineup is number 25. We'll have to check him. Powell, the University of North Carolina. Pascal. Powell's in the game. He's Powell stays in. Right. Thank you, Howard. Powell stays in. Fourth down and two. No game. Billy Johnson stopped for no game. And the ball goes over. Kentucky's offense comes on the field as Jerry Blanton, 50 Jim Kovach, and the rest of the Kentucky defenders get an ovation. Tied right with 
time out on the field. The score, North Carolina nothing, Kentucky nothing. Let's pause for these messages from your local stations. Back at the beach ball with a nothing-nothing game in the first half and nine minutes to play in the second quarter. Kentucky has held North Carolina, and Kentucky now has the football just shy of the 35-yard line, first down. Rod Stewart. Pullback Rod Stewart. In the North Carolina territory for the Wildcats of Kentucky for the first time today. I tell you what, they keep running that wishbone. They keep right coming at them, the Kentucky Wildcats do. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, the ball carrier on that one. Randy Burke doing a good job of laden downfield. Let's take a look at Warren Bryant, All-American tackle from Miami, doing a good job there, stopping his man on the line of scrimmage, giving Stewart enough room to get to the outside. Stewart finds some other blockers downfield. Good game. Now back line, it's Stewart again. Inside the 35. Gain about five on the play. Rod Stewart running the football. And they've given progress down to the 30-yard line, so that would make it about an eight-yard pickup. Rod Stewart in two carries just now has reeled off about 50 yards for the Wildcats. Second down and two. Kentucky ball on the North Carolina 30-yard line. Nothing, nothing. Second quarter. This is Chris Hill to the far side. It appears he has that first down as he drives for the snake. Mike Duffy, middle guard, now in there for Dave Simmons at the middle guard spot for North Carolina. Made a Dave nice stop. Made a nice move on Ronnie Johnson, the free safety, who came up quickly, but a good move by Hill deking his men out and getting the first down. First down. Just picked it up. Ball inside the 30 on about the 28-yard line now. And Kentucky with its deepest penetration. Just moments ago, North Carolina had the ball on the Kentucky 30. The Wildcats stopped them there. Now the Wildcats have driven down the field. First and 10. Ramsey, big rush. Looking, running, hit, tumbles ahead. To about the 25, he gained some yardage on the play. It looked like about three yards on the pickup. Bill Perdue. 81 and the rest of those Carolina defenders try to stop. Derek Ramsey was looking all the way for someone to pass. Let's watch Ronnie Johnson for North Carolina playing pass defense. He's watching the quarterback Ramsey all the time. Now he knows that Ramsey is running and he moves up right there, delivers the lick on Ramsey. Good defensive play by Ronnie Johnson from High Point, North Carolina. Second down and seven on the 25 of North Carolina. Greg Woods was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Stopped by Mike Duffy, the middle guard. Good play that time by Duffy. He was in that backfield almost as quick as the ball was. Greg Woods, the running back for Kentucky that time, brought down for virtually low, no gain. Third he almost lost now. his shirt. Third down play. On the 25-yard line, will Kentucky go to the air? No, they don't. They stay in the ground and tumbling through is Stewart. He appears to be short. D. Hardison, 71, finally made the stop for North Carolina. Boy, Dwayne, that's having a lot of confidence in your offensive ball club, your ground game, when you've got third and about seven yards to go and you run the ball. They came up short, but it's still a lot of confidence in a ground game when you go for it with that distance. It's fourth down at about a yard and a half. At the 20-yard line of North Carolina, Howard David. Uh, we're going to have to have a little uh, dressing change right here. As little man Greg Woods, not so little, 5'11", 189, has got a new jersey in there. They tore the other one up completely. With a timeout on the field, the score, North Carolina nothing and Kentucky nothing. Fourth down and two for Kentucky on the North Carolina 20 in the first half of a scoreless game. That drive to the forward progress of Rod Stewart, make it or not. Make it Woods was the ball carrier, Greg Woods. Ronnie Johnson drove him back. Greg Woods the ball carrier on this one. Let's watch the Kentucky Wildcat offensive line surge. Good block there, thrown on number 31 on the outside. 
And there's Ronnie Johnson, the deep back, coming up for the North Carolina Tar Heels, but he may have come up just a little bit too late. Going to take a measurement. The Wildcats did convert. Made it by about a foot. They needed a yard and a half, and they picked up about a yard and three quarters. There you see the line of scrimmage. The 18-yard line of North Carolina. Deepest penetration by either team today. Got a good drive going right now for Kentucky. Kentucky with a drive having originated back at their own 30-yard line. Derek Ramsey calling the signals. It's the fullback, Rod Stewart, and he's met at the 15-yard line. Up over is Pun Reigns, number 67, the right tackle from Wilmington, North Carolina. Underneath, 57, Buddy Curry, linebacker from Danville, Florida, Virginia, and also 49, Ronnie Dowdy. And there's another shirt that's almost coming off of Rod Stewart. Got those tearaway jerseys out there on the University of Kentucky, and they've lost a couple so far this afternoon. Second down and seven from the 15-yard line. Greg Woods busting down to the 11. Greg Woods will be a couple of yards short. Purdue and Curry on the stop. Bill Purdue getting the part of him. Little Greg Woods, 5'10", 189 pounds. He wants to go inside. Got a late block there from Chris Hill. Chris Hill right there, number 22, throwing a good block for number two, Greg Woods. And right there, Greg Woods runs head on into Bobby Cole, number 31 for North Carolina. Third down and three for Kentucky. Greg Woods again. First down, Kentucky. At about the six-yard line of North Carolina. Bobby Kale and Buddy Curry on the stop, but not until this man got the big first down. A big first down for a little man. You're looking at him, number two, Greg Woods, 5'10", 189-pound senior and a real scrapper. Well, Tremendous resemblance uh, in style between him and a guy named Mike Garrett who used to play pro ball. Little small back with a lot of guts. Well, we call that one too quickly. The roar went up from the crowd, and I guess we were going with the North Carolina with a Kentucky sideline because the measurement, the measurement shows that they're going to be short. And the action on the field shows us that once again they are going for it. They're not going to go for the for the field goal attempt. They're going for it on fourth down. Short by just an inch or so. Well, shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and when you're six foot five, all you have to do is stretch out your frame, Don. I tell you what, he's following a good center, Dave Hopewell, leading the charge for Derek Ramsey on that one. Give the ball to your best ball carrier. That's what Derek Ramsey did. He kept it himself. So after missing by an inch uh, on third down, they pick up the necessary yardage, and it is first and goal, Kentucky. A keep. Maybe a yard for Ramsey as he's driven back. There's Defensive end, uh, Kenny Sheets, was the man that was laying down as a hill fell over the top of Sheets and stopped him for getting any further than maybe.
just has done the job on defense, and now they'll try to do the job on offense. It is second down. Kupak pitching back. Doug Banks comes up, and he's stopped by the defense. Mike Sabanis, the defensive back number four. Let's take a look at a good defensive play by number 44 for Kentucky, Mike Saganos, getting across that line of scrimmage there, beating his blocker and bringing down Banks in the open field. A good job by little Mike Saganos, number 44. He's proven himself to be a very talented young man for these uh, Wildcats. He's all past the receptor on the squad. He's stolen eight over the past three seasons and still a year of eligibility remaining for Saganos. From the 13-yard line, third down and 17 for North Carolina. For Matt Kupak and company, as he gives to Doug Pasco, a freshman. And Pasco comes up to about the 20, but that is going to be way short. And Kentucky's going to get the ball back unless we have an infraction here. Players group to the center of the field. There's a look at Doug Pasco. 49 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout has been called by Kentucky as the North Carolina punting team comes on. Wise move at this point. Call the timeout because chances are Kentucky will get excellent field position out of this. And they should be in good shape. Uh, you know, I don't know if they'll have enough time to go in for a score, but they'll have enough time maybe to get it close enough for another field goal drive. Howard, I think it's a good strategy on the part of Kentucky. However, passing is not their long suit. That's not what they do extremely well, and they do not have time to use their ground game, to deploy their ground game and get in there with just 49 seconds left. You see one of the North Carolina coverage men on the right there putting a new number over his other number jersey. There's an NCAA rule that you have to have certain numbers depending upon the position that you're in. And on the coverage team, this man obviously is in a different position than he ordinarily plays. That's the reason for that different number. And here is the kick from Johnny Elam. The 46-yard line. It was Mike Saganis, and it's good field position for Kentucky. Punt returns are a very hazardous job. The defenders are always right around you. Mike Saganis does not signal for a fair catch. He catches this one, and right there, that's not all he catches. A pretty good lick by North Carolina coming down. Number 29 was Bill Mabry. Kentucky. They were two yards away a moment ago, and now they are 46 yards away on the Wildcats. Double wing setup now, it looks like. Ramsey throwing in front of his intended man. Number 93 was out there, Dave Prosper. Ordinarily a tight end, occasionally does play wide receiver, and the ball bounced in front of him as he had no chance. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. Passing is not Kentucky's long suit. Derek Ramsey was not pressured. Dave Prosper was wide open. It still went for naught. From the 46, second and 10, Kentucky. 35 seconds to play in the first half with the clock running, and the ball goes through the hands of linebacker Buddy Curry, intended for Prosper. Russ Conley made a fine play. There you get a look at 57 Curry, but Russ Conley timed the hit very nicely right there, right on the money. Third down and 10. 31 seconds to play in the first half. The clock has stopped. Nothing, nothing. And the North Carolina defense now. Ready for the pass again. Third and 10. Kentucky actually would just like to get in the field goal position here. Long one downfield is overthrown, intended for Trosper. Now it'll be fourth down, and the Wildcats, it appears, will kick the football. Ronnie Johnson, the deep back in the area that time, covering Dave Trosper. You're looking at him coming back, and that's Derek Ramsey, the quarterback. Quarterback Derek Ramsey, you're looking at him on our Miss Lou Isolite. Let's look at Randy Burke. He's wide open. He's looking for the pass. He already sees it's overthrown, though, but he was wide open. Kentucky kicking, Pete Gummel. And the ball is down inside the five. But 13 seconds remain in this first half. And so that big play on the coverage team by Kentucky would appear to be almost meaningless here as North Carolina will be able to run out the clock and hope for better field position in the second half. 
I don't know what you guys thought, but I kind of figured this game was going to be more of an offensive show than we've seen. These teams are really playing some hard-nosed defense out there. Real good, tough defensive struggle. Sort of typifies the kind of football that's played in the Southeast Conference, but I expected more explosion, more offense, especially from the Atlantic Coast. Well, we have the third and fourth quarters to go. Could be an entirely different game in the second half. And a bit of a mishandle at the snap. And with the clock showing seven, six, now five seconds to play in the half. Kupak just falling on the ball. One second, that'll be it. Pat Kupak leading the way North Carolina Tar Heels into the locker room. And off go the Kentucky Wildcats <laughs> for a nothing-nothing game. It was quite a first half. That's the end of the second quarter of play with the score off Carolina nothing, Kentucky nothing. We'll be right back after these me brief messages. Rusher out, they may go to the air. Kentucky's Joe Bryan kicking. Back in the end zone, Delbert Powell with lightning feet. And he made a pretty nice return coming over the 20-yard line. Delbert Powell set a North Carolina record against Wake Forest this season with a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Delbert Powell has returned kickoffs this year, 532 yards and 22 tries, 24-point average in returning kickoff. He's also the deep man in passing. He's only caught four balls this year for 119 yards, an average of almost 30 yards a catch. <laughs> Not bad. I think we ought to get it to him more often on yeah. the passing game. Well, when he's in there, we'll have to watch for that number 39 and uh, spotlight him when he's in the ball game. Now it is North Carolina in a scoreless Peach Bowl game from about the 21-yard line of the Tar Heels. And fullback Billy Johnson of Buckingham, Virginia, who's a 245-pounder, he comes up to about the 25, right straight ahead. James Ramey, left tackle from Stone, Kentucky, made the tackle. Billy Johnson going back. Freshman, 6 feet 2, 245 pounds. The Kentucky defense, Don. 5-2 defense. Two linebackers, a middle guard, Jerry Blanton being the middle guard. That Tucky, Kentucky defense is a very tough defensive ball club to move against. One wide receiver beyond the top of the screen is Jim Rouse. And again, they run the football, and that was Johnson again. He stopped by the middle. 83 getting up there is Bob Winkle. 59, Mike Martin, the strong side linebacker. Let's take a look at Art Still, number 97, playing defense. He gets the block thrown in him there, puts his arms out, he keeps the man away from his legs, holds his position, and he just stacks everything up there so the linebacker, Mike Martin, can come in and clean up. Billy is Johnson is the number two rusher for the North Carolina Tar Heels, gained 420 yards this year, and I can't believe there were any yards left after Voight gained over 1,400. Lee is wide to the right on third down and four. Kentucky recovers the football. Number 79, James Ramey, and the Wildcats have the football. It was Buddy Deal that created that fumble. Buddy Deal came in quick from his left defensive end. You'll get a look at it again, Don Perkins. Look at 84. Bud Deal, number 84, is the one that puts the pressure on Kubek. Watch right here. Now there, he's going to hit Kubek. You're going to right there. He knocked the ball out of his hands. The number 79, James Ramey, is coming in. Right there, he goes down on top of it for Kentucky. Kentucky, great field position. James Ramey of Stone, Kentucky, in the eastern part of the Bluegrass State. First down, Wildcats. Moving through the fullback, Rod Stewart, who had 69 yards at halftime. Penalty marker on the play, Dwayne. We'll get a look at what the story is. Looks like a legal procedure is the preliminary indication. A legal procedure is the call against the Wildcats. So Kentucky will lose five, and now the North Carolina defense put to the task, and they held at the two-yard line earlier. Actually, they benefited from an illegal, from a uh, delay of the game penalty against Kentucky. Well, as you mentioned, Dwayne, they have been tested before. Once again, they're being tested again with the ball on the 25-yard line of North Carolina. Kentucky does have a first down here. Derek Ramsey. With Rod Stewart, Chris Hill, and Greg Woods behind him. Fake to Stewart. Ramsey. Got rolled. Ramsey. The ball pops loose. But it was fallen on by Randy Brooks. 
rollout option that time by Derek Ramsey. He had the option to either throw or run the ball. Looked for someone to throw, couldn't find anyone to open, so decided to run. He did lose the ball down there, and Randy Brooks, who was leading, let's take a look at it again on our replay. You see the rollout to his left there, to his right. He's looking for someone. Now he decides that he's going to run. Randy Brooks is out in front of him. Right there, when he gets hit, there goes the ball. The ball bounces out, and Randy Brooks, who had thrown the block for him, is able to fall on it for the Wildcats. They gain six. It is second down and nine at the 19 of North Carolina. Nothing, nothing, third quarter. Whoa! And he got the ball away. D. Hardison came on in a big rush, along with Alan Caldwell on the blitz. Strong safety number 38 looking for intentional grounding on his play, the uh, NC crowd. Derek Ramsey rolling out, and right there is the pressure, number 38, Alan Caldwell, the safety is blitzing on that one. Also, big number 71, D. Hardin Hardison is in there. Ramsey gets rid of it and does not got get called for intentional grounding. Hello, uh, folks, uh, how are you? Ms. Lou and to all of us here. And we have a third and nine for Kentucky. Second time Kentucky's been deep in this game. Just before he said he gets it away. Chris Hill down to the five. Russ Conley made the stop as Derek Ramsey hit his left halfback out of the wishbone. Chris Hill. Beautiful play that time. That play worked very well for the Wildcats. Ramsey was not pressured. Chris Hill just sneaked out of the backfield, was wide open. We're looking at it again. There he is, looking at it from the end zone. The receiver, Chris Hill, coming out of the backfield. Number 17, Connolly, brings him down. But the Wildcats have a first and goal. At the five-yard line, right through the middle, fighting to get to that goal line. Ron Stewart. Ron Stewart down to about the one. The big man from Lancaster, Ohio. Ron Stewart has a nose for the end zone. Because behind Ramsey, Stewart was the second leading touchdown man this year with five touchdowns. Good offensive blocking that time by All-American Warren Bryant and the right guard, Tom Gorbro. This place is bedlam right now. Atlanta Stadium, Atlanta, Georgia. Ordinarily on the offense, 97. Art still is in the game at tight end now for Kentucky. Second down and goal at the two. And the North Carolina defense stopping Hill. North Carolina looking for Hill that time, and it was a loss on the play as Ronnie Johnson, the free safety, came in. Ronnie Dowdy coming in, the free safety. Number 89, Ken Shapes blocking it up. The North Carolina Tar Heels doing a good job. Everybody's surging. Everybody's surging. Number 40 turning that play inside. Well, the goal line unit for North Carolina will have to check that particular number. Third down and goal. defense. What oh, unbelievable defense. Inches away. Ulysses Williams led the charge the right tackle with Buddy Curry, the right side linebacker. It looked for sure that Derek Ramsey was going to go on this one. Right now, he's decided that he is going to run. Gets a good block thrown for him by number two, Greg Woods. Right there, he gets a good lick by number 31, Bobby Kale. Ramsey continues to fight for that goal line, but the Tar Heels hold him off at the one-foot line. Another fourth down situation, Don. Fourth down and goal, the second time Kentucky's had this situation in the game. Here we go. I guarantee you they won't take too much time this time. Touchdown, Kentucky! Rod Stewart! And they're going wild on the Kentucky side! behind good blocking by Tom Thorbrook and the Kentucky fans love it. Rod Stewart, as I said, has a nose for the end zone. He scored five touchdowns this year. That's number six. Seven plays, covering 20 yards. So that's Kentucky Blue flying high at Atlanta right now. Pierce is in the game to try the extra point. 21 of 23 coming into this contest. Kick is good. Let's take a look at it again. We're going to 
see the fullback, Rod Stewart. Good blocking by Tom Dorbrook, the right guard. A lot of waves up front. Warren Bryant, number 69, the All-American tackle. Good blocking by that Wildcat offensive line. All right, with a timeout on the field, the score, Kentucky 7 up, Carolina nothing. Let's return for these brief messages. There you see the Kentucky fans. They love it. And here's a look at the first touchdown in the game to put Kentucky ahead, six to nothing. A good third by that offensive line, the ball carrier number 32, Rod Stewart. A little help there from Greg Woods from behind. Kentucky's ahead, seven nothing. Now here's the kickoff. Whoa, deep and out of the end zone. No run back for Delbert Powell as it was booted by Joe Bryant, deep out of the end zone. The juice is flowing right now for the Wildcats. They are really psyched up. They lead it seven to nothing. And North Carolina, hopefully at this point for their fans, will kind of turn it around right now. Delbert Powell not very happy. You know he wanted a crack at a run back. Yeah. Uh, he didn't like to down him in the end zone. He showed that before. Uh, Mislu number one. Go Kentucky. Seven nothing Kentucky. Lots of time remaining. Just under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Let Mislu be the first to wish you Happy New Year. This handle in the backfield. Covered at the 14-yard line by Doug Pascal. The ball bounced off his fingers, and he covered it. And now North Carolina looks a little bit nervous. Well, the pitch from quarterback Matt Kupek back uh, hit someone. I'm not sure who it hit. It looks like it hit Billy Thompson, the fullback, that was leading the way right there. It's Billy Thompson who was going to be leading the way for Doug Paschal. It's his elbow. Paschal does get back to the ball and is able to fall down to the ground. Lost yardage, but they still have possession. Momentum in Kentucky's favor now. North Carolina second and 15 from the 15-yard line. This is Matt Kupek. Going for Powell. Intercepted by Kentucky. Number 44, Mike Sagonis. And around midfield, Mike Sagonis, a New Englander from Norwalk, Connecticut, gives Kentucky the ball back. We're going to take another look at this play from the ground level. Quarterback Matt Kupik. Here we see it from the ground level. You're going to see quarterback Matt Kupik get a little bit of pressure. He's still looking for his receiver downfield right there. He's got to get rid of it. Mike Saganis dropping back. He's the safety. He's in good position covering defensively for Kentucky. And comes up with the interception. 7 to nothing. Kentucky leads North Carolina with a timeout on the field. Let's pause for these messages from your local stations. An enormously exciting football game for the packed house here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thousands wanted to get in here today and couldn't. They shut off the ticket sales. The ball's at midfield. Kentucky leading 7-0 with the ball. Quarterback Derek Ramsey faking to his fullback Rod Stewart. Ramsey throwing for everything. Overthrown. Intended for Randy Burke, and I was just talking about Randy Burke. I'm saying to myself, why don't they go to this guy? He's their leading receiver. And right there, he ran a, he ran a uh, just a straight fly right down the middle of the field. Don, you'll get another look at it. You're going to see Russ Conley defending, but let's watch Randy Burke in isolation here. We're going to see his pass padding. He's running a post pattern. And right there is number 17, Russ Conley. He comes into the picture. He's right with him. The ball's there, number 20. Ronnie Johnson's also there. Quarterback Ramsey had to throw that one high, though, to keep it from getting intercepted. Good coverage by North Carolina. The Burke had his man beat to the inside. If the ball was a little bit shorter, he goes in for six. But it's interesting to note that uh, Frank Kersey, the head coach, if he, in fact, called that play, made a wise choice here you get the ball after a turnover and immediately you go for six second down and ten at midfield for the University of Kentucky that's we Conley. have a man down Russ Conley their starting cornerback on the left side senior injured on the play they do have some depth in that secondary so we may see Ricky Barden in the game he's a freshman from Virginia Beach Virginia as Conley is down Lions International, the world's largest humanitarian service organization, more than a million men in 149 countries throughout the world, giving their time unselfishly to help others. They had a great kickoff luncheon yesterday. They had a full house at the luncheon. It had to be 500 people there, maybe more, maybe close to 1,000 tables for as far as the eye could see at one of the hotels here in Atlanta. And who was the master of ceremonies? A name out of the past. Charlie Choo Choo Justice. <laughs> Great back at North Carolina. 
Second down, 10 for Kentucky at midfield. Kentucky leading 7-0. Less than nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Ramsey throwing drop. It was dropped by 93. The tight end, Dave Prosper, had his hands on it. But there were a lot of Tar Heels in the area. Tell you what, Derek, Ramsey threw that one into a crowd. However, Prosper could have caught it. It was right in a lot of traffic, and he was not able to hang on to it. A good pass by Ramsey and a lot of traffic. Third down and 10. Kentucky got the ball on an interception, but Wildcats have yet to move it on this series. And it's the quarterback. He got down to about the 45-yard line, Derek Ramsey. Stopped by Ulysses Rames, a sophomore from Wilmington, North Carolina. Rest of those North Carolina defensor, defenders, Ken Sheets, 89, fourth down, and the Wildcats who move the ball five yards after the midfield interception will now kick. Pete Gemmel is in the game. Pretty good rush. He shanked that one. Hit it off the side of his foot because they're going to bring this one up the field now. That ball went out of bounds at around the 26-yard line. And right at that point is where the Tar Heels will take over. Trying to go for the coffin quarter on that one, Howard, and he caught way too much of the sidelines. He really shanked that one, as you mentioned. We want to tell you about something that's coming up on the Mislu Television Network, the 40th NIT, the National Invitational Basketball Tournament, coming up in March right here on the Mislu Television Network. They say that was the tournament that they made for Joe Lapchick. Remember the old coach at St. John's? The former coach of the New York Knicks. Right. Let's go now with North Carolina in possession at the 26. And the Kentucky defense doing the job, stopping Larry Tedder, the tailback, and the Carolina Carolinians haven't gotten much out of that tailback position today with Mike Voigt on the sidelines injured. Let's take a look at it again. Looked like Larry Tedder might go for some yardage. The block, he looks pretty good right there, but all of a sudden showing up is Jerry Blanton, the nose guard. And what a job he does. Also getting help by Mike Martin, number 59. 92 in white, Jerry Blanton, recruited out of Ohio, Toledo. Kentucky recruiting the ball players, as is North Carolina. Second down and nine. Up the right side for about three. Carrying the ball was Doug Pascoe. In the game now for Tedder at tailback. You know, Don, as a former running back, I'm sure you could identify with what's going on out there. It's tough when you've got the ball second and nine, second and eight, second and seven, because Kentucky's defense is just coming to the uh, to the fore. They're just stopping everything North Carolina's throwing at them. Right now, when you've got a running ball club like this, you cannot afford to get yourself in a situation where you've got second and long yardage. You've got to pick up four or five a crack. Walker Lee wide left. The pitch goes to Pascal. Wildcats close in on the far side. And Bud Deal, 84, came in to make the tackle at around the 35-yard line. They had to get up to the 36 for the first down. It'll be fourth down, and they're going to have to kick the ball away. Can this Lou is a bit of a dangerous play, a pitch out like this. But we're going to look at quarterback Kupik right there. He's keeping it to the last minute. He's hit right there, tosses the ball off. Number 25, Fashel gets it, but he gets whacked right away by Bud Deal. That can get you in a lot of trouble. All right, watch this guy that's going to anticipate this punt return now, Saganos, who does not like the fair catch. Johnny Elam punting. Saganos dropped the ball. And it looks as if North Carolina recovered. You call it hard. On the 25-yard line. And really, Howard, there was no need to fair catch that one. Mike Saganos had plenty of room. Probably just a little bit too anxious. You see it bounce right off of his pads there in the front. Mike Saganis let it get away from him. The Tar Heels, Larry Tedder, number 32, recovered it. North Carolina's in good field position. We've got someone down on the field. Can't tell from this vantage point which one of the Tar Heels it is. Somebody was shaken up on the punt return. Score right now, Kentucky 7, North Carolina nothing from the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia, with a timeout on the field at 6.21 remaining third quarter. Kind of play that can be the turning point in the ball game. Mike Saganis, it was right into his hands. North Carolina has the ball. First down from the 25-yard line. The ball pops loose, or did it? Well, right at the line of scrimmage there was Larry Tedder as he was hit viciously by the linebacker from the strong side, Mike Martin. 
Doesn't look too cold in the stands. Certainly cold here in the press box. Temperature in the 30s at the Peach Bowl. Jaffe comes out at middle guard, replaced by another defensive back, Ray Carr, number 35. Second down and nine, giving the yard pickup on that play. They come to the right. It is Larry Tedder and that Kentucky defense doing a good job moving with the play as North Carolina running the option now. Good block by the tight end, Bra uh, Brooks Williams. Number 88 is through a nice block to get him a couple of more yards anyway. It'll be third down and four. Whole slew of players now coming in for North Carolina. Number 21, Mel Collins came into the lineup. Doug Paschal also came in. Number 19, Jim Rouse is in, has split in. Big play for North Carolina. Third down and fourth, the Kentucky 20. The play! Oh. The ball was thrown to Billy Johnson, the foot. No, wait a minute. Now they rule incomplete. It appeared that Billy Johnson had it. Well, he had his back to us when he looked like he was attempting to field that one, but evidently the ball did squirt out of his hands. Interesting so to see here. Down. Interesting to see what happens here, Dwayne, on fourth and four. The ball at the 20-yard line, you're trailing seven to nothing. Do you go for the field goal? Still have 4.59 remaining in the third quarter. I would think uh, that they should go for the three, but evidently they're not going to go for it. Walker Lee came into the lineup. He's a split in. That's what they need for the first down, as you see. The yard marker on the far side. Intercepted. No, incomplete. Incomplete. 44, Mike Sagonis was covering on the play. Ray Carr. Ray Carr was the deep back covering on that one. Mel Collins was the intended receiver. It was Billy Johnson. You know, Don, I'm very surprised that with a guy like Fiddle in the, uh, as a field goal kicker for you, who's 13 out of 18, you're down seven points, you need to get something on the board. I'm surprised they didn't go for the three. Now Kentucky, back in action. Randy Burke wide to the left. First down, Kentucky at the 20. Coming up there is Rod Stewart, been the top runner in the football game today. Out to about the 24. Stopped by the middle guard, Dave Simmons of Goldsboro, North Carolina, number 84 in white. In dark, rather, as we look at the white flag, Kentucky Wildcats, and here the Tar Heels defending, trying to get the ball back, trailing seven nothing. Four minutes, 26 seconds to play in the third quarter. Kentucky leading. Number two, Greg Woods, busting up the right side, trying to get that first down as he crossed the 30, and it appears as if the Wildcats have the first down. Yes, they do. First down, Kentucky. Buddy Curry, the linebacker. We've got our Mislu isolate on him. Let's watch how he defends against this play. Takes the block right there, keeps his feet, works down the line, gets a bit of the tackle, but number two, Greg Woods is getting away from him, did pick up the first down. Dave Hopewell, the center, through the good block. Now, tricking off bodies is Chris Hill, who got a lot of action early in the game, and he comes out over the 35 for about four yards. Alan Caldwell made the defensive play. Buddy Curry's been getting a lot of action. We've got him again, spotlighted on the Mizzou Isolite. Let's watch how he plays this one. Someone cuts his feet out from under him, but he's right in the area of the ball. He's always around the ball. Second down and six at the Kentucky 36. Kentucky in white, leading North Carolina in dark, 7-0. Third quarter of the Peach Bowl game. And a gain of maybe a yard there. Maybe a yard pickup for number 22, for number 32, rather, Rod Stewart. And we have coming up third down. Make it third down at about five as they picked up maybe a half yard on that last play. Line of scrimmage will be about the 37. Now Derek Ramsey, number 12, six feet five, will have a good view of the secondary. He's going to pass the football. And he runs left on the option keeping, and Kentucky will have to kick. Bill Perdue making the stop that time for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Doing a good job there setting off Derek Ramsey. Ken Sheets also went on the play on the left defensive end at 6'3", 222. Used all of that to bring down the ball carrier. And here is a dangerous kick return man, 21 Mel Collins, junior out of Fairfax, Virginia, and the punter Pete Gummel, senior from Atlanta for Kentucky. Man, look at Moving this. that kick. Getting just at the nine, going into the end zone. And North Carolina, after a tremendous kick by Pete Gemmel, will have the ball on the 20. Atterbury. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Howard David on the field to make a local Georgian very, very happy. For the past six weeks, Toyota and its Toyota area dealers have been running the Peach Bowl sweepstakes, and the winner is to receive an answer from Toyota, the 1977 Toyota. And here to present the keys to a new answer from Toyota is Barney Brogan, who's the National Advertising and Public Relations Manager for Toyota. Rod Stewart, Kentucky fullback, the leading ground gainer, 82 yards so far, and we have 2 minutes, 22 seconds to play in the third quarter. This team, North Carolina, trailing 7-0 with the ball on the 20-yard line. And North Carolina trying to run it. And getting the carry there was Doug Haskell, freshman, bringing it out to about the 22. Kentucky's defense has been very effective against the North Carolina running game so far. I'll tell you what, the weak side linebacker, number 50, and maybe we should pay a closer attention to number 50, Jim Kovach, for Kentucky on defense. He's really doing a super job out there. Second and eight for North Carolina. Out of the wing formation now, Matt Kupek throws a wobbler. It was dropped by Lee, had his hands out onto the sideline, but it goes as incomplete. How about that, Mr. Perkins? Evidently, Walker Lee was trying to negotiate that sidelines there and uh, find out where it was before he caught the ball. And in the event, he did not catch uh, the ball, didn't have possession of it when he went out of bounds. Tough to pay attention to two things at once. You got to do them one at a time. Third down and eight for North Carolina. One touchdown is starting to look very big in this game. Certainly is, with only a minute and 46 remaining in the third quarter. and. The Wildcats leading these Tar Heels 7 0. On a possession play, they elect to keep it on the ground. No pass there. Doug Pascal running it out to about the 25, and now North Carolina will kick again. There were 10 punts in this game in the first half alone. And on the near side, the Kentucky fans waving that Kentucky dark blue, going wild as they are exhorting their stalwarts from the Bluegrass State. Hey, we got to keep one thing in mind. Kentucky only gave up nine points in the last three ball games of this season. Two shutouts and nine points to Florida in a 28-9 win. They, have, they don't know what giving up points means in the last month. Watching Johnny Elam. Now they call the fair catch. No. But the other man called the fair okay, catch so at 44. Sagonis finally came in and grabbed the ball. I think they're going to get away with it. Right there, you see Mike Saganos. He's catching the fair catch. And right there, on the left of, on the left of your screen, you're going to barely see that. You can well, see that, though. We've got a couple of guys going for it there. A little confusion as to who should catch it. Mike Saganos did feel this one. Great field position for the Wildcats on the, with the ball at their 43-yard line of Kentucky. Yeah, they'll get it straight. They didn't like what happened out there in the last time. They've got to get their signals. They've got to talk to each other on these punt returns. 29 was Bow, John Bow, who appeared to put the hand up, and then the other man, Zagonis, grabbed the ball. We saw that a couple of weeks ago, a little mix-up on a kick situation down in the Tangerine Bowl. Again, I would look at this point, Don, for number 80, Randy Burke, as he comes to the near side, getting a look here at the North Carolina sideline, and Bill Dooley, their head coach. Good field position for Kentucky at the 42. Wildcats and that fullback, big number 12, Derek Ramsey, all six feet five of him, and he's a tough man to bring down. He sure is. Uh, he's a big man, and he's a good runner once he turns up field. Dave was, Simmons was in on the stop. Russ Conley uh, was the man that was playing the left quarterback for North Carolina defense. He had the assignment of guarding Randy Burke. Now he's gone to the other side, and Burke comes to the near side to the left. There's Doug Pascal, tailback for North Carolina. Second and four, Kentucky. And they move it. Number 22, Chris Hill into North Carolina territory. Down inside the 45-yard line. Ronnie Doughty, number 49, the linebacker for North Carolina, stopping Chris Hill, who is out of Montgomery, Alabama, where we were one week ago in the old Confederacy. Well, the Cats have been undershadowed, or I should say overshadowed, by their basketball team. This football team, which hasn't played the bowl game in 25 years, now ahead 7 to nothing. They want to keep that lead and maybe put another marker on the board here in the third quarter with only five seconds left. And on wide left is Randy Burke. And they give us to Randy Brooks. Russ Conley made the stop with Randy Brooks, and they looked a lot like 
the Oklahoma Sooners on that one, Don. The wish ball for the Kentucky Wildcats once again in high gear. They had a long sustained drive earlier. They've got another one going. Randy Brooks, the ball carrier on that one, doing a great job. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, Kentucky 7, North Carolina nothing. Let's pause right here. With Ms. Lou, and uh, we enjoy the association with both of these schools and their followers. Now it is Kentucky working the ball from North Carolina territory, pounding down to about the 30-yard line. Go the Kentucky Wildcats, and their number 77 center, Dave Hopewell, gets up, and the ball carrier was Chris Hill. Hopewell has done quite a job, that big man from Talladega, Alabama. Interesting match also. Dave Simmons, the middle guard for North Carolina, number 84. Number 77, Dave Hopewell, the center for Kentucky. Good, strong matchup right there. Second down and seven for Kentucky. Kentucky leading 7-0, just the start of the fourth quarter in the Peach Bowl game. A highly emotional football game as Chris Hill goes out of bounds on the near side. Knocked out by Buddy Curry of Danville, Virginia, linebacker for North Carolina. And we are going to have Kentucky short by about five yards of that first down yardage. A line of scrimmage about the 28-yard line. It's going to be third and five. Here's a big play coming for Kentucky. Big Try play. Chris Hill comes out of the lineup. Randy Brooks comes in, probably with a play from head coach Fran Kersey. Let's see what it is. Watching Derek Ramsey does a good job of directing this Kentucky offense. Randy Brooks to the near side. Close. Trying to get to the first down yardage. And he comes down inside the 25-yard line, maybe to the 23. Ken Sheets from the left side of the North Carolina line made the stop on Randy Brooks. And now we know what the play that Randy Brooks brought in from Pro uh, Fran Kersey was. Get the first down. It's going to be close. We're going to have a measurement out there on the field right now. Randy Brooks is very close to getting that. He is a little short. Another fourth down play coming here for Kentucky. They're going to go. You know, when you see the Lions lapel pin, you know there's a community leader who has one purpose, and that is to serve others. Randy Brooks back out of the lineup. Chris Hill, number 22, in the lineup. We're looking at the fans there. In oh, balmy Atlanta. Balmy Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hospitality is still warm right now. But the weather is a little chilly here for the Beach Bowl. It's a lot colder when it was a lot colder now than when Clark Gable marched in here for, you know, during Gone with the Wind, I'll tell you. <laughs> Fourth down and inches. Got it. Ducky getting the first down of the North Carolina 20-yard line as the bread and butter man from Lancaster, Ohio, Rod Stewart, who Fran Kersey got out from under Woody Hayes' territory. And let's give a lot of credit to the center, Dave Hopewell, number 77, and number 53, Tom Dorbrook. Just a good offensive charge here by the Kentucky Wildcats. This is where football games are won or lost in the offensive or defensive line, and this time the offensive line was able to beat the Tar Heels. You now let's go back the live. Oh, the 20 yard line, and the Wildcats. Ramming the ball down deep in now. What a block by Dave Hopewell, the offensive center for Kentucky. This guy's only a soft at 6'4", 240. He opened up the hole for the first down, the crucial first down, a play ago. And right there, he opened up a tremendous hole in the middle of the line. We all see the ball carriers. We know what they're doing. But Dave Hopewell from Talladega, Alabama, is having one whale of a game here this afternoon. And Rod Stewart. The up man there in the backfield alignment for Kentucky, closing in on 100 yards rushing today. Still early in the fourth quarter. And he gets the ball again. Big first. Touchdown for Rod Stewart. And Kentucky is now two touchdowns ahead. Again, Don Perkins, there was Dave Hopewell that opened up that hole. Taking out the nose guard, Dave Simmons, the middle guard for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Rod Stewart goes in, standing up. Caldwell gave a good chase for the Tar Heels, but he couldn't catch him. There he is, number 32, Rod Stewart. And I think right now, with this pandemonium breaking loose in Atlanta, the entire state of Kentucky is maybe is rising just a little bit above the other states in the Union, man. Eight plays covering 57 yards for that score. John Pierce's extra point try is good. 
and Kentucky is out on top by two touchdowns. It's 14 to nothing. Rod Stewart has now picked up 98 yards for the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's take a look at that last touchdown run by Rod Stewart getting a great block from the center, Dave oh. Hopewell. Right there. Right there's a good block on Buddy Curry from North Carolina. And there you see Rod Stewart, high knee action. He's determined to go in. Alan Caldwell gives a good chase, but he cannot be denied. Rod Stewart is.